einfach mal los. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Tobias Neumann and I'm head of global customer service at DGIX. And tonight I want to talk about the change of our ticketing system. And um, basically I want to tell you why we did it, what did we want to achieve with it, which improvement does it bring? And finally the question, uh, would we do it again? But first things first, I have to thank a lot of people who were on this journey with me. And I really have to say, I was, would not have been able to pull this off without the outstanding and massive support of my colleagues, which are super great. And where it was, it was just a great experience to work with them. And um, yeah, without them, it would have been impossible to do this. So my eternal gratitude goes to them and will stay them for will stay there for an eternity because yeah, it was just a great experience. And from that on now to our motives. So what were the reasons to change? Mainly, I wanted to improve the customer service experience at DKIX, and in the center of that is the customer service team and the ticketing system we use to communicate with you about all um, your orders or if there's a troubleshooting or anything. And um, I found that there were many items which needed improvement, but first I had some more urgent matters I turned to yeah, first, or I gave priority to like fixing the maintenance and uh, announcement system, um, semi-automated and go away from full manual work and things like that. And when all of this was done, I came back to, re to research ticketing systems. Uh, actually, um, I wanted to catch up with standards and demands on the market. For example, like being able to communicate with us completely mail and phone free on a web uh, GUI or web a web um, yeah, site where you can enter your, um, can look up your orders, can erase new tickets or um, add information to your existing ones. And um, like a real customer portal where you could do all of that. DKIX already for a long time has a portal, but it did not include the ticketing part. And so for me, it was very important that this was included in the software I would later choose. Um, yeah, maybe one of the most crucial points in all of that was to improve transparency of the work of my team, the customer service team, towards uh, externals, customers, and also internally. I wanted to um, give a much clearer picture about who's involved in a ticketing process, and what the status of it is, and who is considered to do the next action to carry a case forward. And um, if you look back on the last 25 or even on the last 15, 14 years with us, the only face you ever saw of us was in form of an email. And since customer service is a very, very uh, personal line of work, a very direct line of work, I wanted to change that uh, also, including the ticketing system to get nearer to you, to get closer and to really um, give you an insight. In, for example, when you have a ticket and uh, the ticket clearly says, waiting for customer, waiting for customer service, waiting for partner, then you know exactly what's going on and who has to do the next step. And you can't, you can't to a part do that via email, but it's in my opinion, not as efficient as that. And it uh, largely depends how every one of us writes with email, but on the web GUI or in the ticketing system portal, it's uh, very clear from the overview that you get. So that was very important to me to uh, fix that and, and make it better from the whole experience. Um, yeah, one other big step in it was I wanted drastically to improve the handling for the customer service team itself. I mean, um, for, for DKIX, I'm doing this uh, since uh, eight years now, but I have been in service uh, basically all my life. And so I uh, had to work with a lot of different ticket systems in the past. I know their merits, I know their flaws. And so I had a pretty clear picture of uh, what I want and how I want the customer service uh, team to work in the future. Um, Basically, I knew what they would need to be more efficient, uh, um, make tasks less time consuming. And one very important point, raise the level of fun. Because, you know, when you have to work a lot with a system or with different tools, you want these tools to be fun, basically. Um, they should not be a pain in your ass, uh, which make, gives you a hard time while you work. So it was important for me that the system is, uh, has a good appeal, has good functions, and that I can um, automate away a lot of manual work. And finally, 
One of the reasons was that I wanted to be able to scale better for future endeavors of DKIX. Uh, for example, we have the product called DKIX as a service, where someone uh, says he needs an exchange in region and we completely provide that with customer service, ticketing portal, uh, branded address, branded homepage, all of it. And so I needed a system where I can, without um, too much effort, clone a project, put the branding on and make it work. And yeah, I found um, this was this were the reasons I wanted to change. And um, so why did I choose Jira Service Management? Basically, because it made me able to cross off my list of things I wanted. And um, so it's a flexible and extensible system. That means if it doesn't have a specific feature you want or you later want in time, um, you can go to the market and look for one and, and integrate it. Um, that works like you go onto the marketplace of Atlassian and you see um, on the different products which are offered or different add-ons in how many currently running Jira service management installation installations this is uh, used. And additionally, you get a rating and a lot of comments. So you can get um, a picture before you buy something, before you use it. And also, um, in my experience, you can very directly reach out to the programmers who built these add-ons and even talk to them about adjustments, which we, for example, did. Um, for our Jira service management installation, I wanted it to be lean because, you know, as um, it is like this, the more add-ons you have, the less easy it is to upgrade and it basically can start to hold you back. So I said less add-ons as possible and only the ones which we really definitely would need. And so that we are not uh, stopped from upgrading the system in time when uh, a new bug fix is coming out or, or a hot fix or whatever. You don't want to wait for the last add-on to be ready to be updated. So yeah, we kept the lean approach here. Scalability, um, in regard to what I said on the slide before for DKIX as a service and other products, I needed the system to be flexible uh, within um, the framework of DKIX. Um, yeah. And automation for sure was a very big point because um, over the years we did a lot of things in RT, like a lot of experiments, change dashboards, styles, queues. Um, we did so many things and with some things we were happy over the time. RT is a good system that I have definitely to say. and. Um, but it didn't turn out in the way uh, we wanted. And also we never saw these changes really flying, really getting um, that momentum where you think you really made a step ahead in uh, terms of improvement. And um, after all, so, so the problem was that we still had to do a lot of manual tasks, which were very tedious and time consuming. And automation was something that I definitely needed to do uh, on the next level with the new system. And luckily, Jira uh, made a lot of my dreams uh, come true in this regard. So I could automate a lot of manual tasks we had before. Integrated customer portal was another thing, as said earlier, I needed to have. And now we come to a, another very important point, the CSET or the customer satisfaction score or ratings. Uh, we didn't have had that in the past, but to me personally, it's crucial that on every single ticket you have with us, that you have the chance to give us a direct response. For sure, you do this in writing uh, by you say, hey, um, thank you, or, we had a great time, good work. But it's very different um, when someone, when a customer takes really the time to assess what he experienced and then gives you a clear rating and a feedback to a direct action. And in the beginning, I thought I would see feedback step by step pouring in and eventually gain some speed. But what I really found happening was the complete opposite of it. From the beginning on, you really use the feature a lot and I get feedback every day, um, whether you are super happy with us or where also where we did not meet your expectations. And exactly that, to get that so directly from you know, helps us a lot uh, to improve things in some regards. So I could really not be happier with the customer satisfaction, uh, satisfaction ratings you give us and that you participate in this because you don't have to, but you really take the time. And I just want to let you know that I really appreciate that. It's very important for me. Another point, um, connection to other DKIC systems was very important because we uh, gr grow a lot and have new IXPs and uh, we need um, to have these systems talk to each other um, for having a smart portal uh, or smart invoicing or anything like that. And since the ticket system and the things done in there are very in the middle of all that, sort of like a train station where everyone comes uh, comes to, gets an information from, goes away again with that, uh, we needed 
that to happen in an easy way. And Jira provides an API that makes it really easy for us to do that. Um, lastly, I wanted to have a modern and good looking interface, which uh, to my personal um, taste, Jira is that. And uh, it should be fun to work with. I really wanted the team, the customer service team, to feel like they were moving out of the old house into a new and fresh house where you enter the front door and look around excited and see, okay, this is my new environment. These are the new things I can do. And, and to be excited by that, to really have fun with it. That was just extremely important for me. So, yeah, then came the preparation phase. Actually, I started to research ticketing systems in 2018 and over 2019 that step by step developed in a more solid project. And uh, since I knew a lot of systems from uh, my uh, work life already, um, I, I had a good foundation, but it was not enough. So I reached out to friends uh, who work in the industry or in other industries. I went on conferences and talked to uh, people about uh, their systems they use and how many customers they serve with and the strengths of them and the flaws of it. And finally, I even called the Goethe University in Frankfurt am Main to ask the administrators uh, for an appointment for a meeting um, because it was highly interesting to me that they de um, serve tens of thousands of uh, 40,000 people with their ticketing system. And so I wanted to learn how good that works. And luckily they were super friendly and super inviting. And so I got the chance, went over for a day and had real, real insight. And that was very inspiring what I learned uh, on that day, but all, also on the other occasions. And I took that all in to, to make my mind on what to do next. Um, another point was, getting everybody uh, at DKIX involved, like going to all the departments, telling them what I wanted to do, what I need from them to achieve that, to, to do that successfully, and to make sure that their resources they have to give to my project would be ready in time when I need them. So I gave them heads up as early as I could. Um, but besides all of that, um, I also had to prepare myself because I knew when I start this uh, journey, it would be a really tough year for me. I had the project of the ticketing system change. I had uh, to do manage my team, do daily business, being involved in projects. So um, I had a proper moment of thinking before I said yes to all of that because I knew how big the challenge uh, would be. A lot of you will work in projects and sometimes projects can really get overwhelming or very full of tasks and you need to have a clear head to steer through that and to stay in control to to lead the development not to run behind it and so um yeah <laughs> how to say that sometimes um eventually when you start to uh, dream about jira because you configure it day and night and it sinks into your brain this is the moment where you should really find some uh, more efficient ways to relax and and get some fresh air and sometimes it helped me to tell myself toby you're just building a ticketing system here you don't build a spaceship here it doesn't have to travel to the andromeda galaxy or go on walk it takes emails transitions them into tickets and then rinse and repeat. And that helped me some time to get back on the soil when you had 100,000 tasks around you and were running to complete them. So sometimes take a breath, take a step back, look at what you are doing. And when you then uh, have done that, you can breathe out and start again. So very early, I had to start uh, gathering requirements. And what uh, I basically did was I looked at everything the system touched or which is intertwined with it and try to identify every single item that needs a look or a research or a deep check and then cluster all of these uh, single items into requirement fields like uh, ticketing portal dependency script announcements and um, to have it all sorted properly then i applied priorities on all the matters so i would know what to do first what to do eventually last and when that all of that was set um, we had to agree on a work style and we chose to go with um, weekly sprints. So normally on a Friday evening, we would talk about what to achieve in the next week. And on Monday morning, we did a quick sync and then uh, worked as much as we could to have some results on Friday that we could cross off our list. Um, in the beginning, we worked with Confluence and uh, yeah, made a pretty good list. But it went, it became unclear and, and very overwhelming very fast. So we knew we could not continue to work 
having all the information in Confluence and we moved on to Jira Core, uh, where we then probably set up weekly sprints and moved all the items into the different uh, yeah, sprints. And that uh, changed a lot when we did that and we had a much better work experience on the project after doing that. Lastly, uh, for the requirements gathering, it's super important that you be open to others and um, not only follow your narrow plan or vision or ambition or idea. You have to let people tell you what is wrong, what is not good and what could be better, because then you end up having a really great result in the end. So um, I had people around me where I asked, hey, what do you think about that? Should we build it like this or is this more appropriate? And the team was totally um, invited in that process as well. So we were often going to the service team telling, hey, how do you want your future queues to work? Which automatics do you need? Um, how shall we shape this? Do you want to get three messages for information or only one notification? They all had a saying in it to, um, and that made it even more their home because they put the bricks in it themselves. And so when you do a project, I can only urge, let people find flaws in your planning, let them um, give you good ideas and improve on that. Yeah, migration, but finally the tasks or ties that bind how I um, call that uh, slide here, because it was an extremely big challenge to get out of the old system of request tracker after 14 years. I think the first ticket noted in the system is from 21st of uh, February and it has the title test five. And so I could look up, it's 13 years ago since we started to work with the request tracker system. It did a good service to us in all of the time, but moving out after all of that time was a real big challenge because we had to track every queue, every script, every intertwined system, every attached system. Um, and there was so much to look at that, um, and we wanted to do that really thoroughly. We didn't want to have any accident to move on the new ticket system and then something breaks. That was a, a horrible vision to us and we never wanted that to happen. So we were like super duper into death with every of these check tasks. And we produced large overviews where you could really uh, see um, where to an RTQ would be connected, what it all triggers when this and that happens. So that ate up a lot of time to just create a map of all the things you need uh, to touch. And then finally, we had a basic plan how to move, move out of the labyrinth in, in the end. But that was not all. Um, there were also a lot of uh, questions like how to shape the system. For example, Jira is very chatty. So Jira likes uh, to, to, to tell you everything it does normally uh, from the standard setting. Like, yeah, you open the ticket. Toby has taken the ticket. Toby likes the ticket. Toby uh, commented on the ticket. Toby moved the ticket. And, and you could be spammed by that a lot. And it was clear to everyone the project that customers would not want this, nor that we would want this. So we decided to keep it also very lean here. One ticket for ticket, uh, one response for ticket creation, one for the dialogue for the ongoing uh, communication, and then finally one ticket uh, for closing. Because we want to have a clear beginning and the end of a service case, and in the middle there's the conversation happening. And uh, so we went with that. Um, then we had to craft a lot of um, material regarding the training or an FAQ for customers and uh, relay that to marketing so they uh, could put that all in place before the launch of the system. And um, finally, it was super important that we do this without noise and very silent to not disturb anyone else working with the system. So we didn't want to do our big, big project and then bring others into trouble. That was a, a big priority on everything here. Um, yeah, besides all the technical tasks we had to do, for sure, there is a lot of soft skills um, or social stuff you have to do. You have to onboard everyone into the new system. You have to provide proper trainings and to prepare all of that. That took also a lot of time to really have a good um, yeah, foundation for the training. So at first, we established a place for feedback, a dedicated channel, uh, even far before the migration, so that everyone could uh, talk to us directly to the migration uh, team or to the project team. and. Um, multiply the responses. For example, if someone asked how to do this and that, and should it not be like this and that, and we answered that, then all in the channel would see the answer that have the same or had the same question. So that was a good start. And then we conceived the training material and at first did group training sessions with the whole service team, where we talked about the fundamentals and basics, uh, yeah, 
the, the basic style you would work with the system. But then we did also focus sessions with only two persons each um, to really go in depth with the other advanced functions of the system and to enable them because that would not have worked properly in a group. And we really wanted to take uh, one or two hours to answer just questions to a small amount of people. And so we did that. And then documentation, documentation and documentation. Um, when you do such a huge change, after all that time, you need to really properly uh, for, for your generation and maybe for the next generation to note it all down so that to the people from tomorrow will still know uh, how this all works. We decided to put our documentation in three different parts. We have the operators or administrators handbook. We have the agent handbook and the BSI uh, security information. So you really have one dedicated guide that goes to administrators and has all the how does this automation work in depth parts in it and the agent handbook, which is more about daily business and BSI there's noted the security mechanisms of the system uh, backup systems and all of that um, besides the training and onboarding on the migration day and in the days and weeks afterwards you really have to uh, monitor the situation not only the systems but also how people feel how people feel working with the system and you need to be there all the time and provide help whenever it's needed it's it's not a good thing then when someone starts to work in the new system and he says oh i i can't do this and that and it's really important to me and then nothing comes back for an hour so that was not a a viable choice for us. We needed to be fast in getting back to the people. Finally, the change day came. So um, on November 16th, we started the change and I want to quickly show you how we did this, what, what happened after each other. So we met in the morning at seven o'clock, everyone um, with a, a lot of coffee in the backhand and some snacks on the side for the nurse. And then at first we took fresh backups of all the involved systems. That was really important uh, because if anything would have go, uh, gone wrong, we could roll back. And then we announced the change start internally and externally. Um, the next thing we did was to uh, change our LDAP configuration to um, activate it for Jira service management so that all of our customers could use their existing Geekix portal account to log into the new system without the need to create a second account or to change anything. And once that was done and it worked, we did uh, the export and the import of the tickets. And that is a very important point. Um, we had a choice here. We could just say, have said, let's finish the old tickets in the old system and let's work the new tickets in the new system. But that was a no-go from me, maximum no-go from day one. Um, it would have been just a huge pain for customers and ourselves if we did it like that. And that would not have worked. Also, I, I was not completely not okay with this. So I said from day one, I need all active tickets to be in the new system. And luckily, Eduard, the second picture you saw on my second slide, he wrote a script that completely transitioned all active RT tickets with all their uh, persons in it, um, the whole dialogue, timestamps, due dates over to the new system. So from day one, the service team could directly then start to continue to work in these tickets in the new system. Um, after the tickets were imported, the um, service team started to groom through their tickets and look for uh, if they were complete or uh, if they encountered any errors. And they did this in the same time when we continued with the other technical tasks, like swapping over the mailboxes from RT to JIRA, activate them for incoming mails, and also uh, um, press the action button for the portal to make it available. When all of this was done, uh, all of it was complete, we checked uh, finally all systems for proper functionality because we wanted to be sure that we didn't unleash hell and burned everything into the ground. Um, and um, that, that we wanted to make sure before we could, would go to sleep on that evening because probably none of us could have gotten any minute of sleep without that. And when we knew everything was green and everything was fine and no problems were existent or shown, then we announced the change and internally and externally cleaned up the old RT queues and finally closed the last tickets in RT and put the light out. And that was the end of the migration. So um, as you surely can think, I was very excited for that day. And I did not sleep very well uh, on the night before because I was excited. And uh, finally, the ticket change I have dreamt for, for years, it was here. And we were really doing it now. It was really that rocket flying up finally to reach its its target somewhere and um 
for, for me, that was a very uh, important moment in my in my work life. And uh, especially doing that in this team where I was able to work with was very great to me because we had a lot of these super nice work moments where you sit together with a bunch of people and you throw ideas around and everybody elevates on the ideas of one, one else. And then you put your heads together and say, yeah, that's it. That's the idea. That's what we really wanted. And it's the work of all people combined. And I had a lot of great uh, moments and experiences in that journey. So finally, would DKIX do it again? Yes, we would do it again if necessary. If enough need comes up so that you want to do a big operation like this, yes, we would do it again in the future if, if there's any need or reason why we should do. From now on, we will continuously improve the ticket system and add new features and functionality to it. And um, that will be driven by your feedback. So we hope to get a lot of feedback from your side and we will closely listen and uh, make something out of it. So before I end, I bring some fun with numbers because I think uh, on a project it's it's obligatory in the end to present some fun number stuff. Project timeline was 2019 to 2020. Um, we had a total of over 370 single tasks as JIRA configuration issues that we needed to take care of. Um, we migrated the, uh, 1,053 tickets from our request tracker to JIRA. And uh, while we tested all the automation and functions, we created over 43,000 test mails, uh, which was a big pile of mails. And we uh, also put eight feature requests, given them back into the community, filed for bug reports. And if I'm not completely mistaken, one of our bug reports made it in the major uh, branch patch line of, of the Atlassian product. So. To conclude, thank you uh, very much for being here and uh, for listening what I had to tell. If you think um, to, or plan to change your system as well or plan to do it in the future, please feel free to contact me. I uh, gained a lot of experience while doing that and I'm super happy to share that experience uh, with you. So yeah, reach out to me, Discord, LinkedIn, Xing, wherever you want, you will find me and I will gladly provide help. Thank you very much. That's it. Okay, dann vielen Dank, Tobias. Ähm, hat sehr Spaß gemacht, dir zuzuhören. Ich habe noch eine Handvoll Fragen aus dem Chat mitgebracht. Ähm, ich glaube trotzdem, ja. äh, wir können nicht alle beantworten in, in den fünf Minuten, die wir so ungefähr haben. Ähm, aber im Zweifel bist du bestimmt noch mal da. Schau einfach noch mal in den Chat. Ähm, die, glaube ich, am meisten gewortete Frage, und wahrscheinlich ist das alle Jira-User, äh, ist, ob ihr Jira Data Center habt und falls nein, wir mit der Umstellung von Jira auf das Cloud Licensing Modell, Cloud Licensing Modell, mein Gott, äh, umgeht. Ja, ähm, zuerst sei gesagt, alle die Fragen haben, die ich heute nicht beantworten kann, schreibt mir einfach eine E-Mail, schreibt mir bei LinkedIn, ich werde alles beantworten, schießt es einfach rüber. Ähm, und mit der Frage habe ich natürlich schon gerechnet im Vorfeld, das ist klar, das ist auch die wichtigste Frage, wenn es um Atlassian Produkte zurzeit geht. Ähm, da bin ich ganz ehrlich. Diese Neuigkeit mit äh, der Cloud-Geschichte hat mich völlig überfallen äh, von heute auf morgen. Ich habe das an einem Freitagabend um, ich glaube, 22.30 Uhr von meinem externen äh, Kollegen erfahren, der gesagt hat, Tobi, überleg dir gut, ob du das vor dem Wochenende noch lesen willst oder ob du das am Montag anschaust. Ich habe es mir dann gleich angeguckt und habe erst mal gedacht, das kann ja wohl nicht wahr sein, äh, sowas mal eben um die Ecke zu kippen. Also persönlich war ich natürlich kurz geschockt, aber das hat nicht lange angehalten. Wir haben am Montagmorgen uns direkt zusammengesetzt und geguckt, was wir hier machen, äh, um das richtig aufzusetzen. Also wir haben die Server-License, haben alles on-premise installiert. Das läuft alles auf unseren Geschichten. Und als wir jetzt gehört haben, dass das auf vier Jahre limitiert ist und es damit nicht weitergeht, haben wir uns sofort für die Data Center license entschieden, haben die auch schon gekauft und werden das Produkt jetzt eben darauf umstellen und dann auch unten drunter mit den Data Center optionen noch ein paar weitere Verbesserungen vornehmen, also mehrere Cluster haben zum Beispiel, mehrere Nodes. Damit sind wir halt für die, weil ähm, noch dazu sei gesagt, Atlassian wird ja, retired ja nicht das Data Center Edition Produkt. Das heißt, das hat kein Ende der Laufzeit, soweit mir bekannt ist. Und damit können wir also On-Premise noch beliebig lange weiterfahren. Außer in der Zukunft ändert Atlassian nochmal seine Meinung. Alles klar. Dann haben wir da schon mal die Antwort ja. drauf. Ähm, was waren denn bei euch so die am häufigsten gefragten Features? Und eine spannende Frage aus dem Chat war auch, äh, habt ihr das in irgendeiner Form intern gamifiziert, dass dass da vielleicht die Kollegen bei dir im Team mehr Spaß an den Tickets haben, äh, wenn jetzt der, keine Ahnung, hundertste Mac-Change-Request kommt oder sowas. <lacht> ja, also ich sag mal, ähm, 
Was, das sind ja eigentlich zwei Fragen. Also um es schöner zu machen, damit es mehr Spaß macht, habe ich erstmal geguckt, was sind die größten Painpoints des Teams? Was sind die Sachen, wo, die wir heute am schlimmsten finden und die wir, wenn wir es könnten, sofort ändern würden? Und die habe ich auch zuerst umgesetzt. Das war zum Beispiel, dass ich die Queues ähm, also sehr gut autosortieren. Wir haben verschiedene smarte Queues, so nenne ich die immer, die verschiedenen Zwecken dienen. Zum Beispiel ähm, eine Queue, die einfach nur schaut, ähm, wenn uns ein Kunde länger nicht geantwortet hat, dass wir das eben sehen können, dass wir da wieder drauf zurückkommen. Ähm, dann haben wir Eisenhower, das Eisenhower-Prinzip in unser Ticketing-System eingebaut. Also jedes Ticket kann nach Urgency also nach Dringlichkeit und Wichtigkeit gefleckt werden und äh, gerät dadurch auch automatisch in eine andere aufmerksamkeits -Queue. Also wenn ich zum Beispiel ein Ticket als als hot und urgent, very urgent flecke, dann ist es automatisch in einer Queue sichtbar, die heißt äh, hot potatoes oder hot tickets. Und wenn da mehr als null drin ist, dann weiß ich sofort, ich muss mich darum kümmern und jetzt muss mir halt auch niemand mehr sagen. Ich kann das selbst monitoren und die Kommunikation darum kann auch wegfallen. Ich kann das selbstständig jetzt tun. Ähm, dann gab es natürlich noch eine riesige Verbesserung. Traditionell hatten wir für jeden Auftrag immer mehrere Tickets. Also das heißt, wir haben eine Struktur gehabt aus einem Order-Ticket, darunter ein Master-Ticket, darunter ein Kommunikationsticket. Und wenn mehrere Produkte involviert wurden, hattest du mal ganz schnell fünf, fünf Tickets für einen doch recht kleinen Vorgang. Und das haben wir komplett verändert, so dass wir nur noch ein Ticket pro Vorgang haben. Also wir sparen uns jetzt aufs Jahr gesehen wahrscheinlich tausende von Tickets, die unsere Queues nicht mehr verstopfen und uns einfach bessere Übersicht gewähren. Ähm, das könnte ich jetzt noch ewig lang weiter erzählen, weil es da noch ganz viele Sachen gibt die wir gemacht haben. Aber das waren jetzt einfach mal Punkte, mehr Übersicht haben, schneller reagieren können, sich auch nicht von Ticketmassen äh, overwhelmed, also überrollt zu fühlen, einfach bessere Kontrolle zu haben. Und da hat Shira tatsächlich einen Riesenunterschied gemacht. Denn ein Beispiel noch, du hast äh, jede Menge Tickets in deiner eingangs die du noch anfassen musst und ähm, du musst ja erstmal scannen, was ist denn das Wichtigste davon? Ist da ein Kunde mit einem gestörten Dienst im Vergleich zu jemandem, der vielleicht nur eine Frage hat? Da machst du natürlich das eine vor dem anderen, ganz klar. Aber wie signalisieren sich das zehn, elf Leute untereinander bei so einer Menge Tickets, die wir bekommen? Und da hat sich die Eisenhower-Skala jetzt wirklich äh, als gut herausgestellt. Die Leute flecken dann die Tickets, die sie gesehen haben und dann siehst du halt sofort in der Übersicht, das hat eine hohe Priorität, das ist sehr dringend und da kann man wirklich gut mit ähm, was war denn nochmal die zweite Frage? Ich glaube, wie wir die Happiness gemessen haben dann? Die, meisten, nee, äh, die eine Frage war, ob ihr es gamifiziert habt oder wie du, wie du die Langeweile rausgenommen hast. Ich glaube, das hast du gerade schon ganz gut beantwortet. Die, die andere Frage eher war so, was waren die meistgefragten Features? Vielleicht auch, lass mal die internen Blick wechseln und eher extern. Ähm, also was natürlich klar war, dass eine bessere Übersicht auch gewünscht war. Gerade dadurch, dass wir immer nur E-Mail hatten, konnte es ganz schnell passieren, dass halt jemand zum Beispiel die Übersicht verloren hat, wo wir gerade in einem Fall stehen oder dass auch manchmal sehr viele Leute irgendwie auf CC eingebunden waren, also die, die üblichen Probleme. Und was wir halt anbieten wollen, waren, dass erstmal unsere Responder, die du kriegst, wenn du bei uns ein Ticket eröffnest, dass die klarer in ihrem Ausdruck sind. Also, dass da ganz klar die Ticketnummer drinsteht, nochmal drinsteht, was wolltest du eigentlich von uns, was war denn dein Ticket, was du beauftragt hast, dass das nochmal da drin ist und ähm, dass du einen Link hast, der auf Wunsch, wenn du das möchtest, dich sofort in das Portal bringt und dein du dein Ticket in der grafischen Web-Oberfläche sehen kannst. Und was ich da feststelle, ist, dass die Leute tatsächlich oftmals in der grafischen Oberfläche es leichter haben, die Übersicht zu behalten, in, anstatt also zehn E-Mails zu lesen, die aus einer langen Konversation entstanden sind, gehst du halt an einen Ort und scrollst runter. Und dazwischen siehst du auch immer, wie der Status des Tickets sich verändert hat. Warte auf Kunde, warte auf Kundendienst und kannst sehr transparent nachverfolgen, was da Step by Step passiert ist. Äh, Im Vergleich zur E-Mail, mit der man natürlich auch so arbeiten kann, ist es aber ein gewaltiger Vorsprung, den wir da jetzt haben. Also wir merken wirklich, dass das auch intern bei unseren Kollegen aus den anderen Abteilungen äh, wirklich sehr gut funktioniert. Ähm, ja, also das wäre ein großer Vorteil, die Übersicht zu haben. Du kannst an ein Ticket auch reingehen und kannst es direkt mit dem Share-Button scheren, so wie du das halt aus WhatsApp oder anderen Apps kennst. Also ich sag mal, das, was wir eh schon gewohnt sind, an anderer Stelle in der Kommunikation zu tun, wollte ich halt auch im Ticketsystem haben, dass da ein Share-Button gibt. Du klickst drauf und dann fängst du einfach an, entweder deine ganze Company zu adden und damit alle so auf dieses Ticket zu enablen mit einem Klick, auch sehr wichtig. Stell dir mal vor, wenn du zum Beispiel in Urlaub gehst, ein Kollege will weiterarbeiten, dann äh, ist das oft eine Sache des E-Mail-Forwardings oder des frühen C10s des Kollegen. Und so hast du halt die Möglichkeit, einfach zu sagen, share äh, mit meiner Urlaubsvertretung und sofort hat der Zugriff auf alles. Also da gibt es auch Sachen, die es leichter machen. Cool. Ja, ja dann, äh, wie gesagt, ich hätte noch hunderte Fragen mehr gefühlt, ähm, aber vielleicht schaust du einfach gleich nochmal selber im Chat oder die Leute schreiben dir auf äh, LinkedIn oder eine E-Mail. Uh, vielen Dank ja. dir. Jetzt stehe ich nicht mehr zwischen dir und dem wohlverdienten Bier. Ich hoffe, wir sehen uns nachher noch beim Social. Und dann würde ich sagen, machen wir eine ganz kurze Umbaupause und wir sehen uns gleich wieder mit dem Johannes und wie man Router, uh, die kein ZTP sprechen, hat heute. Danke, Tobias.
Also vielen Dank.